design. My mission is now more about what do we want the field to look like? Uh, research ethics was a real, you know, Wild West field in the early days. You know, I, I like to think that some of the people you've interviewed who were my mentors were the first generation in the field. I mean, Charlie McCarthy was generation one. Leroy Walters, Bob Levine, these were the founders, you know, Tom, these are the founders of the field in many ways. They created research ethics, at least domestic American research ethics, and ironically, they've also been seen as the founders in some other places around the world. So I'm either the second generation or maybe the third, depending on how you count things. And I keep watching what these guys have been doing, and they haven't let up. They're still contributing to the field. They're still trying new ideas. And I, I feel that my mission is to keep going um, and to expand the field in some ways. Um, expand because it's not only about IRBs and informed consent. It's not only about you know the risk benefit. And I spent an entire PhD on risk judgments and why IRBs can't do them very well. And that was an interesting little niche. But the world of research ethics is now so broad, I, I can't even get my arms around all of it. It extends into national security. It extends into labor policy, into humanitarian intervention. Um, it's a massive field. So I'm, I'm trying to think of how the field is going to grow and what kind of expertise we're going to need in it for the next generation. And so at the end of this second third, <laughs> you're trying to figure out how to expand this field? Well, it's not just the, the next third is the expansion part. Well, you know, this is because you're asking a little bit about about me, I will tell you that there's a certain amount of dissatisfaction with what I've accomplished so far. Um, because a lot of us, at least I know that I went into this to borrow the, you know, the tired phrase to make some kind of difference. I wasn't sure what the difference was that I was trying to make, mind you. It just seemed that the field had a a wonderful blend of political reform and social awareness coupled with the ability of science to promise a lot and raise some challenges, that that was really exciting. And we didn't have to decide what we wanted the field to be like or our role in it. Everything counted, sitting on IRBs, writing papers, running the ELSI program for a couple of years. It's all good. But now I feel a bit more of a stewardship responsibility for what the field could could do. I mean, in a way, we spent a lot of the first 15, 20 year I did knocking on the door. Are we allowed to come into your, to your room and, and make a difference? Well, they let us in. In fact, they're inviting us in now. They're expecting us to be in the room. So there's a, a bit of a, an obligation to think about what the legacy of the field's going to be 15, 20 years from now. And, and I would like to be able to make some kind of difference in the next 10 or 20 years. I'm not sure what it's going to be. I'm really not sure what it's going to be. Ooh, that's up. Should he lower his voice when he says the future? But honestly, I, I, to, to do the same thing, a lot of, I'll just speak very, very, you know, personally. Uh, I either have a short attention span or I just love having a lot of balls in the air. So, some of the balls are already being picked up very nicely by an entire new generation of researchers who know more about a lot of the issues that I used to study than, than I do now. And I'm delighted that we can fill an entire conference center, a convention center with people. Um, but I do think that the field of research ethics is, is at risk of stagnating if we're not too, if we get too complacent then we're going to be talking about IRBs and informed consent for another 20 years. For me, that's boring. Honest to goodness, it, it's boring. I'm much more interested in pushing some of the, the boundaries into areas that are not, strictly speaking, um, contained within the old-fashioned definition of research ethics, you know, research involving human subjects. So I, it, it's... I'm sort of admitting or confessing to a kind of uh, uncertainty about the about my future, but also about the future of of the field, if it even is a, a field that's so large now, it's larger, larger than a field. Do you have a, a, are you worried about anything in the, for the future of the field? I, I'm not. I think the I think the quote the field, um, as defined by 
lots of graduate programs, medical humanities programs, research ethics programs, preminars work, um, you know, bioethics commissions. The field's in pretty good hands in terms of the capacity that we're building. There's a lot of capacity being built, master's programs and students getting trained. Um, but it, for the most part, the field was a responsive field. You know, we were responding to issues and trying to help. You know, Belmont Report responding to a set of issues in some ways. The federal regs responding to a set of issues. The challenge, I think, for field is deciding where is it going to go and do we want to simply wait for the next thing to happen? Do we want to get out in front of it before it does or do we just kind of want to, you know, double down and, and, and place our bets on, on red and black and say, well, we'll be prepared for new things, but meanwhile, we'll also run bioethics centers. I really, I really don't know. And I, I have to say that some of my, my skepticism is not so much about things internal to the field as much as it is about the way that society is organizing itself. Um, you know, I'm, I'm shocked and depressed that we're still having debates about the teaching of evolution in this country. I mean, it's, it's depressing. To be perfectly, to be perfectly honest, um, sad, sobering that here we are. It's 2013, almost 2014, and we're having that conversation. Or climate change, we're having that conversation, really. So my my uh, worry is not so much about me or the field as much as what society is going to be doing, and whether it's going to care about. Something.